using intercepts. What are intercepts? Intercepts are where a graph of a line, or any graph, intersect the x and the y axis. So if you see here, the y-intercept of a graph is the y-coordinate where the graph intersects the y-axis. The x value of this point is always 0. So if you look here, where the graph of this line intersects the y-axis is right here at 4. Okay? And if you think about the x value of this point, the x value of this point is 0. And if you think about the x value of any point that's on the y-axis, no matter where you are, if I'm here or here or here, any of these points, the y val the x value is zero. Whenever you're on the y-axis, the x value is zero. Okay? The x-intercept of a graph is the x-coordinate where the graph intersects the x-axis, and the y value of this point is always zero. So if I look at where this graph intersects the x-axis, it's right here at two. And if I think about that y value, it's zero. And again, any point on the x-axis, the y value is always going to be zero. Now, why is that key? Because we can use that concept to find the x and y intercepts of any line without actually graphing the line. And then we can actually use that to graph the line itself. So let's take a look at some examples here with these equations. Okay. So what I'm going to do is using the concept is I'm going to find the x and the y intercept. So let's first find the y intercept. So remember what we learned that the in the y, whenever you're on the y-intercept, the x value is always zero. So the way I use that concept to find the y-intercept is I'm going to substitute a zero for x here. So I have here three times zero minus two y equals six. Now what is three times zero? It's zero. And zero plus or minus anything doesn't change anything. So I'm left with negative two y equals 6. And then when I divide by negative 2, I get y equals negative 3. So that's my y-intercept is negative 3. Now let's find the x-intercept. So now I'm going to make y 0. So we have here 3x minus 2 times 0 equals 6. And again here, negative 2 times 0 does become 0. And 3x, let me change colors on that. And 3x minus 0 is 3x. So this becomes 3x equals 6. And then when I divide by 3, I get x equals 2. So my x-intercept is 2 and my y-intercept is negative 3. Let's take a look at the next example here. Now, if you notice what happened, when I, over here, when I was finding the y-intercept and I turned x into 0, it pretty much took this whole 3x part and it just got rid of it, right? And I was just left with the negative 2y. All of this went away. Why? Because anything times 0 equals 0. And when you add or subtract 0, nothing changes. So we could kind of use that as a shortcut here. So in order to find the y-intercept, I'm going to turn x into 0. I'm going to substitute 0 for x, which is basically going to get rid of all of this. And what does that leave me with? That leaves me with 6y equals 60. And then I just divide both sides by 6. And I get y equals 10. Now, again, remember the reason why I skipped to this is because when I do negative 5 times 0, it's going to become 0. And 0 plus 6y is 6y. Okay? So now let's find the x-axis, the x-intercept. Again, that means I'm going to substitute a 0 for y, which means all of this is just going to go away, and I'm left with negative 5x equals 60. So when I divide both sides by negative 5, I get x equals negative 12. So there are my x and y intercepts for this equation. Now, if this little skip, if this little shortcut doesn't make sense to you, then by all means, do it the way I showed in the first example. All right? So now, this third example here, let's find the y-intercept. So I'm going to substitute a 0 for x, which gets rid of all of this, and I'm left with 7y equals 28. And when I divide both sides by 7, I get y equals 4. And now let's find the x-intercept. 
And I'm going to substitute a zero for y, which gets rid of all of this and leaves me with 8x equals 28. Then when I divide both sides by 8, I get x equals 28 over 8, which I could simplify. I could divide both these numbers by 4 and get 7 over 2, or 3.5, or 3.5. Okay? Pretty easy, right? Let's move on. Okay. So here, you're going to look at a real-world situation and a graph of that situation and determine what the x and the y intercept represent in the real-world situation. So it says here, a hot air balloon is 750 meters above the ground and begins to descend at a constant rate of 25 meters per minute. The function f of x equals 750 minus 25x represents the height of the hot air balloon after x minutes. So let's find the intercepts. Some of these are easy to find, like this one right here. We can see it's exactly 30, that my x-intercept is exactly 30. Now here, um, this y-intercept, it looks like it's 750, right? But just to be sure, let's go ahead and figure that out. In order to figure out what my y-intercept is, I want to turn x into 0, which means I have here f of x equals 750 minus 25 times 0, which all of this becomes 0. 750 minus 0 is 750. So f of x, remember, is the same thing as y. So we can see that our y-intercept, or f of x-intercept, is 750. Now, what does that mean in terms of the problem? What does this y-intercept of 750 represent in the real-world situation? Well, where was the balloon when at the beginning of the situation. In the beginning, where was this balloon? It was 750 meters above the ground, right? So that's what this y-intercept of 750 represents, where the balloon was before it started descending, okay? So then what does the x-intercept of 30 represent? Well, it was descending to the ground, right? So how long did it take the balloon to reach the ground? It took 30 minutes, and that's what the x-intercept represents in this situation. All right, moving on, two more examples. How to use the concept of intercepts to graph, to, you know, graph a linear equation or linear function on a coordinate plane. So you see here this first example, we have 3y equals negative 5x minus 30, and we want to graph this, but we're not going to do like we did last time, make a table and pick a bunch of values. We're just going to use the x and the y intercept. Now, the best way to do this is to take your equation and make sure your equation is written in standard form. Remember that standard form is ax plus by equals, not 30, <laughs> I was thinking about this here, equals c. So what that means is I want my coefficient and x and my coefficient and y to be on the left side of the equation and the constant c to be on the right side. Well, right now, that's not what's going on here. Right now, I have negative 5x, that's my ax, is on the right side. So I want to move it over to the left side. So basically, I'm going to do this just like eliminating an extra variable, which means how do I get rid of negative 5x? I'm going to add 5x to both sides. And so this cancels out here, and on the left now I have 5x plus 3y equals negative 30. And now my equation is in standard form. So let's fire, find our intercepts. Let's find the y-intercept first. So I'm going to substitute a 0 for x, which basically gets rid of all of this, and I'm left with 3y equals negative 30. And when I divide by 3, I get y equals negative 10. So we go to this graph. Where's negative 10? This is 0, negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8. Negative 10 is here. So I just place that point there. Now let's find the x-intercept. So I'm going to make y 0 now, which gets rid of all of this and leaves me with 5x equals negative 30. So then when I divide both sides by 5, 
I get x equals negative 6. So now I go to my x-axis and I put a point on negative 6. Then all I got to do is take a straight edge. Don't freehand it. Get a straight edge or a ruler and draw a line. Now notice I'm not going to just connect the dots. I'm going to extend the line as far as I can. And there is the graph of the equation 3y minus 5x. 3y equals negative 5x minus 30. All right, last example. Fractions. Ooh. Okay, let's go ahead and do the same thing we did the first time is this equation is not in standard form. We got our bx, right? Negative 3 fourths x. That's our ax, sorry, is here on the right side. It needs to be on the left side. So since it's a negative 3 fourths x, I'm going to add 3 fourths x to both sides. Okay, and then I'm I end up with 3 fourths x plus half y equals 3. And now I can very easily find my x and y intercepts. First, let's find the y intercept. So I'm going to make x 0, which gets rid of all of this and leaves me with half y equals 3. And in order to undo multiplication by a fraction, we're going to flip and multiply. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 over 1. So I find here that y equals 6. So now let's find our x-intercept. So I'm going to make y 0, which gets rid of all of this, and leaves me with 3 fourths x equals 3. Again, this is a fraction, so I'm going to flip and multiply. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 4 over 3. I can cross simplify here, right? And I get 1 times 4 is 4. So my y intercept is going to be 6. That's right here. And my x intercept is going to be 4. That's right here. And again, I'm going to take a straight edge. And I'm going to not just connect the dots, but I'm going to extend the line all the way through. Let's go this way. All right, hopefully you understand how to use intercepts.